Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start and just let people uh, trickle in as they do. So uh, welcome, um, my name is Christine Fedorov and I'm gonna be hosting this webinar. And uh, I know some of you know me, for those of you that don't, um, I've been in the, just to give you some background on me, um, I've been in the battery business since 1997. I uh, started at Trojan Battery and worked there for uh, about 13 years. And I worked, um, started in engineering, I'm an engineer, and moved into product management um, and market management. And then I moved on and worked for um, an AGM manufacturer, a couple AGM manufacturers. And then I came to rely on three years ago now. So I've been in lead acid and lithium and over 20 years and in engineering and marketing and sales functions. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I wanna thank you for being here today. And um, obviously if you're here to learn about Insight Series product, you're in the right place. So I wanna get into um, how the webinar is gonna work. So what you need to know to participate in this webinar. <clears throat> so you don't really need to know much, we're, that's what we're here for, but um, just to tell you how it's gonna go, I'm gonna go through this slide deck. You should be seeing my slides on the screen right now. And if you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them through um, the Q&A button, which will either be at the top or bottom of your screen, depending on your setup. If you click on that, you can ask a question. And one of our panelists, we have um, a, an engineer online as well, will answer your questions. And you'll get those answers in real time. And if for any reason, we don't get to your question during the webinar. Maybe it's a more in-depth question that needs more time. We will email you uh, shortly afterwards. So you will get an answer. And if you have anything you wanna to communicate to me during the webinar, you can do it through the chat func function. I will look out for messages. I already had one pop up there that I answered. I'll, I'll do my best to get to those. It may be difficult while I'm going through the webinar, but, um, and if I can't answer them, maybe somebody else can that's on the panel. Um, so let's get into um, what you're gonna learn during this webinar. So today I am going to cover the features and benefits of Relyon's Insight Lithium Series batteries. And that'll be in comparison to lead acid, as well as in, in comparison to other lithium solutions that are out on the market. So by the end of the webinar, you'll have a good understanding of the benefits of lithium over lead acid, but more importantly, you'll have uh, a good understanding of the specific and unique benefits of Reliance's lithium series product. Uh, many things that I say will get repeated because they, they apply in, in various areas of this presentation. So if you don't get them the first time, you'll probably hear them again. And let's just jump right into this and get started. So, you know, I'm sure that all of you have heard the expression garbage in, garbage out. Uh, less commonly, do you hear quality in, quality out? Um, but I wanted to talk about that because I can spend close to an hour here talking about Insight and all the amazing things it has to offer. But if I was in your seat, I would be asking questions about what's behind the product because if the quality in isn't good then the quality out isn't and i would you know specifically want to know the who the what the why and the how behind the product so we're going to jump into that so starting with the who behind the product um, Reliance has over 190 years of combined battery experience um, mostly in the engineering, sales, and technical support functions. And a very large percentage of that experience is in the golf car type applications, which is our main focus for this webinar since we're talking about our 48 volt Insight product. And, you know, I say golf car type, this experience extends into applications like utility vehicles, greens mowers, low speed vehicles or LSVs, neighborhood electric vehicles or NEVs, four by fours, AGVs, and similar vehicles. 
So I want to point out, I'm going to continue to say golf car market, golf car vehicles, but just know it encompasses many other applications like the ones I just mentioned. Um, we have specifically with engineering, which is, you know, this is a very uh, engineering driven project here. Um, we have 65 years of combined experience specifically related to golf and we work directly with the main golf manufacturers around the world. Um, we've tested golf cars extensively over the years on all types of terrain and in all types of um, situations like in cold environments, warm environments, with individual users in fleets. So we really have application knowledge and test data behind all this. The what behind Insight, that was really natural for us and I've already kind of been speaking to it. Um, you know, although we have experience in other markets like floor machine and scissor lift and marine, it was, we decided to start with the, the applications and markets we know best, which is the golf market. And you know, one benefit of pursuing a product for that market is that it does apply to many other applications like I previously mentioned. The why behind the product. So you know, when I first started with RelyOn and over the past few years, um, we, we noticed a demand for, um, for golf car type batteries and the lithium technology increasing. We were getting requests all the time. So there was a need for sure. And, you know, when, when we looked around at the solutions available, including what we offered previously, there wasn't really an ideal solution. Every solution had limitations. So we knew there was a, a need for a true golf battery in, this, in, in lithium technology. Um, so, as I said, there were lithium options. We had one, but there were limitations. So we had to address those limitations in our design. Uh, there truly wasn't an ideal battery. So that was the why behind it. And the how, and this is a very important part of the equation. Reliant, you'll see partnerships up there on the page. We formed a strategic partnership with BMT and they are a leader in the battery management system technology and they hold several patents. And this is a critical point because the BMS is really the brains of a lithium battery. And to actually work directly with the hardware and software engineers in defining the functionality of the BMS, it provides a level of control and accessibility that simply sourcing an off-the-shelf BMS does not. I want to stress that anyone can buy lithium cells and an off-the-shelf BMS and put a lithium battery together. It's done. Some of our competitors have done it. Um, we've done it in the past, and you see people online doing it. But when you do that, it's not optimized for anything in particular. And it certainly was not optimized for golf applications. So forming this partnership and having our engineers work directly with the BMS engineers to design exactly what was needed is why Insight is really unlike any other solution available. So now that we've addressed the, the who, what, why, and how behind Insight, I want to get into where we started. So another very critical aspect to the success of this product is where we started, which was with a clean sheet of paper. So rather than repurposing an existing product, which is commonly done, we literally started with nothing and designed the 48 volt Insight from scratch. So designing a, a lithium solution or any solution from the ground up is an opportunity and it was an opportunity for us to provide the market with everything it needed and solve the issues that early lithium solutions brought to the market. So I'm gonna repeat that. Not only could we provide what the market needed, early lithium solutions did some of that, but it also brought issues to the market. So this was an opportunity for us to solve those issues. So I'm gonna go over some of the major design inputs, starting with power. So really it's the continuous and peak currents, which may seem really obvious to figure out, but they really require data collection to determine them properly. Um, there's peaks, but peaks over what period of time? And do you wanna design for the maximum peak 
for extended times. There's a lot of factors in that. Um, we've experienced with a lot of those off the shelf products that I talked about that when we tested them in our lab and in, in outside and in our, at our technology center, that they would disconnect because they hit a peak current. So they just weren't designed for what a golf cart needed. So it's really imperative to know exactly what the drive profile looks like. Capacity, which is range, it determines the range or mileage the vehicles will deliver per charge. So we realize customers have different needs. You may have somebody that wants to do a round of golf a day. You may have other people that are using the car, the vehicle as a primary mode of transportation in their, in their community. So the needs vary. And with the products that were out there, you were limited to what the amp hour was in that battery. So if it was a 12 volt 90 amp hour battery, you put them in series for 48 volts and you have 90 amp hours. You can't go down, you can't go up. Um, so we thought we were looking at how can we design one product that can cover the needs of, of uh, the varying needs that are out there in the market. The next one, the third, which is probably one of the most important ones and most people may not even be aware of it, is regen current acceptance. So regen currents, which are currents that the motor puts into the battery during speed control and or braking, are another common cause of battery disconnects with other lithium batteries because the BMS hardware and software was not set up for these currents. With, with most lithium batteries in the market, if the regen current is too high, and when I say too high, I mean higher than the allowable charge current, it will disconnect. It thinks it's a charge current and it protects the battery and it disconnects. So you'll have a sudden stop while you're driving. Or if the battery is at a high state of charge, maybe it just came off charge, you, you, you use the car and you immediately go down a hill and there's regen current. It will drive the voltage up high and you'll reach an over voltage limit and the battery will disconnect. The BMS will di disconnect the battery to protect it. So these are issues that we knew we had to solve. And uh, there was a lot of discussion on doing that. And I'll get into that in the, in the uh, results. The next input was the ease of use. So there's different solutions out there. There's large, I call them large format 48 volt batteries where it's one big battery. Uh, we had considered that, but then what shape do you make it so it fits in any type of golf car? And even if you figured that out, how do you get it in there without modifying the tray or having to uh, create a new hold down because the existing ones wouldn't work? So that wasn't a solution that, that we felt was very easy to use. Um, there are solutions out there, and we've had them in the past, that are 12 volt batteries that you put in series. And yes, they can fit in there, but they have other issues that come with that. Because when you put them in series, and I'll get into more of those details, it's easy to have disconnects and imbalance issues. So we didn't feel that was an easy to use solution. So we had to look at how can we, how can we um, deal with those challenges. And then finally, reliability. None of the features would matter if the product's not reliable. So we had to design reliability into the product. And again, I'll get into the details and how we did that. Um, you know, of course, there's many other details that were considered and included, but these are the main overarching factors in the design of Insight to address what we saw missing or limiting out in the market. So the bottom line is the goal was to develop a product that could handle the power required without having unnecessary disconnects, could provide flexibility and capacity for the occasional user to the heavy user, could handle regen currents, again, without unnecessary and dangerous disconnects was easy to use and was reliable. And that's exactly what we accomplished. And as far as we can see, there's no other solution like Insight in the market. And, and we've looked, I've looked a lot. So let's get into the, to the details behind it. Oh, first I'll show you the final product. So this is the final product. It's a 48 volt, 30 amp hour GC2 size battery. And like I said, it was specifically designed to meet the power and energy needs in all types of golf cars, utility vehicles, AGVs, and LSVs. So I'm going to go through installing the battery and then the operation of the battery. And as we do that, the, how we dealt with all those inputs and the benefits, the features and benefits will come out along the way. 
So the first thing is the most obvious, um, drop in ready, the battery size. When you get the battery, you'll see it's the exact same size as a standard golf battery. Uh, a typical eight volt lead acid battery or, or six volt if, if any of you are still using those. Um, this is the exact same size. And if you're familiar with the BCI group sizes, it's a GC2 or a GC8 size. And you, you, you notice it looks like an eight volt battery or a 12 volt lithium battery, but it's actually, each of those modules is 48 volts. And we put those into the standard size battery. So this means you can drop these batteries into your existing tray without modifications. And you, uh, you can use the existing uh, hold down brackets. Now, one of the uh, benefits of lithium is that it's lighter weight per amp hour. And with this battery, it's 34 pounds versus a typical lead acid battery of its size, which is 62 or 63. So you definitely get the benefit of lighter weight. Those larger 48 volt single batteries, although they're lithium, you don't get that benefit because that one big lithium battery is heavier than the individual lead acid batteries. So that was another advantage of doing it this way. And you'll notice on the covers of those batteries, you'll see the lifting brackets that look exactly like the kind that we're used to seeing on lead acid batteries. So that um, makes it easy to install. If you're a dealer, you have those golf lifting handles you can use to install these batteries. Another thing I'm gonna mention here, and I'm gonna get into more detail later, is you'll notice there's six batteries in this picture. It doesn't mean you need to put six in. You can use as few as two to three batteries depending on your vehicle and your desired range, and we'll get into that later. But if you don't use all six spaces, we do offer what we call spacer batteries, which are empty batteries to fill those spots so that you can use the existing hold downs if, if you need to fill those spaces to do so. So if you refer back to our, if we refer back to the clean sheet, ease of use, this certainly goes in that category. So there's no connections here. So we're gonna get into how you connect these batteries next. So there's one critical difference in how these are connected versus lead acid and other lithium batteries. Instead of connecting them in series, like you do with lead acid when you connect six eight volt batteries together, or in the case of most lithium where you put four 12 volt batteries in series to make 48 volts, these are connected in parallel uh, since each unit is 48 volts. So you can, you obviously connect the positives together and the negatives together rather than the positive to the negative. Technically, you can connect up to 10 in parallel, although most golf cars would only uh, fit six for 180 amp hours. And again, there's spacers to fill in if you use less than six batteries. And there's several advantages to, to this system, to designing a parallel system. One, we, I've touched on before already, it's scalable. So if you only want 60 amp hours, you can use two batteries. If you want 90, you can use three. If you want 120, you can use four and so on. So you can pick the amount of batteries you need for your application. And if you start with three and you decide you want more, you can always add more later. Um, there's redundancy, like it says on this slide, if you lose one battery, you don't lose all your power. You're not limited by the weakest link. You'll still be able to drive your vehicle. You'll just lo lose the energy available from that battery. So if a battery disconnects or if something happens, you're not out of luck. And then balancing. Um, when I mentioned before, when you put 12 volt batteries in series, they're problematic when it comes to keeping balanced. I mean, 12 volt batteries in series, the only way to truly have them balanced is to charge each battery individually, which is completely impractical in this application. So having a parallel connection uh, assists with the balancing. So that's, those are the advantages of the scalable um, connections. The next thing that, um, I want to look at is the CAN connection. So this is the only really real additional step that you have that you don't have with lead acid batteries. Everything else is the same except you put them in parallel instead of series. 
there's one connection that we have here that you don't have with lead acid batteries and that's CAN cable connections. So what you do is you, we provide the CAN cables and you connect from the CAN out of the first battery to the CAN in of the next battery and then the CAN out of that battery to the CAN of the next and so on. The end batteries are not connected to anything. This is only battery to battery connection. And although the CAN cables are not required for the operation, they'll operate completely normally, provide you the energy you need and the power you need without the CAN connections. The CAN cables assist in the balancing. So information is passed from battery to battery so that they can be in full balance. So what we call our bullseye balancing. We, that's another one of our things we're, we're, we're really proud of is how well these products balance, which is a common conversation in lithium um, as an issue. And again, that's because they're put in series and they don't have the algorithms that, that we have to balance our batteries. This is where our software plays a key role. Um, and one, one key thing about that is uh, most lithium batteries out there, if not all, the balancing happens at the very end of charge. You'll even see on the spec sheets, it's at a high voltage where balancing starts. So there's, very, there's a very small window for the balancing to happen. With Insight batteries, the balancing starts very early in the charge and there's ample time to get them balanced. And again, with the communication cables, that, that helps that happen. And there is some balancing done during discharge as well, again, with the communication cables. Um, so at this point, you have your batteries installed, you have the power cables connected, and you have the CAN cables connected. So the next thing is waking up the battery. So you'll see that there's a wake up button, and then there's some LEDs to the right of the wake up button. So to get the batteries started, you want to press and hold the wake up button for about five seconds until the first LED on the right flashes green. And it will continue to flash every five seconds indicating the battery's awake. And when you have several batteries connected in parallel, once the first battery is woken up, it automatically wakes up the other batteries. You'll see the next battery turn on and the next battery turn on and they'll all start flashing green. Once they're all on, they're ready to use. If you want to look at the state of charge, you can tap the wake up button again, just once quickly, and you'll get the state of charge from the LEDs. The LED on the left will be a solid green, and the LED on the right will either be green, red, or orange, and it'll either be solid or flashing, and each of those combinations of LEDs provide you with the state of charge. And we have a uh, quick installation guide that um, has a table telling you what the LEDs mean, what state of charge that the battery's at. So that can be a, a handy feature to have if you wanna see what their state of charge is. Another thing is, is you can turn the battery off. Similar to how you turned it on, you press and hold the wake up button. The LEDs will turn red, and that means it's powering off. So you can do that, let's say for long uh, seasonal, you know, off time storage, you can turn the batteries off to save energy. If for some reason you leave your batteries, let's say you go out of town and you're like, oh, I forgot to turn them off. You don't have to worry because they will automatically go into a power saver mode after three days. And the power saver mode gives you more about two years before the batteries get fully discharged. So they're completely safe and you don't have to worry about damaging the batteries. Um, and if they do go in power saver mode, let's just say you're gone for a week and they go in power saver mode, you don't have to physically go and wake up the button again. As soon as you use the vehicle, discharge or, or put it on charge, a charge current, it'll automatically wake them up. So now the batteries are installed, the connections are, are on, they're awake and they're ready to go. So what will you experience with your Insight vehicle? For those of you that have driven a vehicle with lithium batteries, you, you already know this, you immediately feel the difference. Um, there's, there's more pickup, the acceleration, you really feel it. There's just a zippiness to the, to the ride. It feels faster and lighter. 
And this is due to the higher voltage provided by the batteries, as well as, like I said, the, the overall weight being reduced. You'll also feel like you can drive forever because the range is significantly longer. We've tested um, many golf cars at our facility, and sometimes we're just wondering when they're going to stop because they, <laughs> they keep going. So you get a lot of range. Um, speaking of range, this, this information comes from testing we've done with various cars at our facility. So with two 60, it would be 30 amp hours each. So with two batteries, you get 60 amp hours and we've recorded between 40 to 50 miles per charge. That depends on the terrain, if it's hilly or flat and, and the load you're carrying will play a role in how much mileage you get. But as you can see, it's, it's, it's a lot of mileage, substantially more than, than lead acid. Um, another thing is, is you won't feel the vehicle getting sluggish as well. So um, I meant to mention that, another, another thing that you'll notice when you drive them. Um, you may be looking at this and say, well, 60 amp hours, how can that give me so much mileage when my lead acid batteries that might be 170 or 200 amp hours gives me less? And that's because the efficiency of lithium battery is, is significantly better than lead acid batteries. So that 170 to 200 amp hours in a lead acid battery is not the amp hours that you actually get in a golf car. First of all, you're not, um, you're not using the rate that that 170 and 200 amp hours was based on. Those are 20 hour rates, and that's not the rate that the battery is being discharged in a golf car. Um, with lithium, you get the capacity regardless of the rate of discharge. So you get much more mileage, even though the amp hours on the label say a lot less. So moving on, equally important to what you experience in performance is what you don't experience. So interestingly enough, one of the features that we're really proud of is something that you won't even notice, which is a good thing. And what I'm speaking to is unnecessary disconnects due to overcurrent or regen currents. We've experienced this over and over um, in testing that we've done with other lithium product. And you know, this was a, a major input to our design. Again, I mentioned knowing the proper peak currents and the duration of those currents so that our BMS was set up to handle them. And then knowing the, um, the, the regen currents, how high were they, how long do they last, and coming up with a solution that could handle them at any state of charge. So you're not experiencing those disconnects, which are you know, a huge inconvenience for a customer. So we're going to get into how we did all this. Um, you know, the, the, the BMS I mentioned earlier, we call it the brains of our product. And honestly, we could spend an hour or longer just talking about the BMS. So this is going to be a, a brief overview. Uh, it's quite a complicated um, um, piece in the battery. Um, you know, we say it's robust, elegant, reliable, and intelligent. So I'm gonna start with um, the robustness of our BMS. So the hardware is oversized, first of all, so it allows it to handle high power and keep it cooler than it would if it wasn't oversized. Um, it's a purely solid state device-based BMS. So there's no mechanical wear and tear typically found with electromechanical devices. And, you know, using, there are other BMSs that use solid state devices. It's not just about using a solid state device, but it's how you use them. It's how many you use and where they're located. So if you look at that board, those rows of black components that you see, those are our solid state switches. We use, I've never seen so many on a board in any battery we've cut open. So we use a lot of them and they are located such that they dissipate, dissipate heat properly. The distribution of heat is, is critical. And um, we've often seen a, um, a switch overheat in another product and, and cause issues. So 
not only is the design of it robust, but the placement of the BMS in the battery is unique and robust, which I'm gonna point out in a picture on another slide. Um, and then the other advantage of the solid state versus the electromechanical is how fast they are. They're very fast and very reliable, so they can, can turn off and on and respond as needed very quickly. Um, I mentioned earlier, and like I said, I would repeat a few things, the continuous and peak currents. So most lithium batteries use an off-the-shelf sourced BMS or PCM, which is a, which is a simplified uh, protection circuit module um, that have a random overcurrent value that was programmed in it. And as I said, the result is the BMS will just disconnect. And it's very difficult, and I would venture to say impossible to change those values. If, if you're a customer, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't get in the product and change it. But even as a supplier sourcing those, um, the, the BMS companies, you know, make thousands of these, they sell them, and they're, they're not in the business of supporting customizations. Um, so it's, it's next to impossible to change them. And you just have to live with what it has. So again, I mentioned before, we, we design it specifically with peak currents for specific time periods. So we actually have three levels of peaks, a really high peak for a short period of time, moderate peaks for an extended period of time, and even more moderate peaks for, for, for more time. So, and those values were not just values we picked you know, decided to do. We actually did testing on various golf cars and looked at what the needs were. So this is, I can't stress how customized this is for, for golf utility and similar type vehicles. And, and by the way, with, um, with a lot of product out there, like when you use the 12 volts in series, when you do get a disconnect, like I mentioned earlier, because they're in series, when one battery disconnects, the whole system disconnects, you're out of power. And a lot of batteries require you to completely remove loads from that battery to reset it, which would mean taking out a wrench, taking the cables off that battery, having it sit there without anything attached to it, reattach them, and that will reset. So that is, a, is an inconvenience that, that none of us want. Um, with our product, if, if one does disconnect, you have the redundancy, so you're not even gonna notice it because the other batteries are there. And it does reconnect automatically when the conditions are met for it to reconnect. You don't have to disconnect the cables. Um, we speak to intelligence here. I mean, the, the design, the location of the, the solid state switches is all part of that. But another key component and the information put in like the, the, the currents um, is another part of that. But another key thing is the software on the BMS. So we have an intuitive learning software. It's, it has a lot of complex algorithms in it to calculate state of charge and state of health, incorporating many variables. And the amazing thing is, is it gets more accurate over time. So other state of charge um, algorithms in BMSs that we've tested tend to drift and lose accuracy, but ours learns from the data it collects and gets more accurate over time. And again, that's why we stress having the CAN cables connected so it can do its job. Um, and then another component, which I've touched on, but I'm gonna talk more about, which is in the intelligence of the software, is related to the regenerative uh, braking. So we said it's an intuitive software that manages uh, regen currents. So other lithium products out there have a couple reasons that, that they can't manage uh, regen currents. Well, the main reason is, is the, the regenerative, the battery cannot tell the difference between a charge current and a regenerative current in most products, if not all other products. So when the car is driving and there's a sudden regen current that might be 100 amps or higher, there's a spike, that is typically higher than the maximum allowable charge current. The BMS sees that as a charge current, goes into protection mode and disconnects the battery. 
Another situation is the battery's fully charged or close to fully charged, and there's a high regenerative current, and it drives the voltage up, and it, and it exceeds the maximum allowable charge voltage, and again, it disconnects. What we've done with the Insight product is we have two separate paths on the BMS, one for charge and one for regen. So the battery does know the difference. So the charge currents have the limits that they have because we wouldn't want somebody charging our, you know, our battery at a substantially high current for an extended period of time. But the regen current can be much higher. And when it goes down the regen path, it sees the high current, it knows it's a regen current. It has an algorithm that knows how to manage that regen current so that it can accept it. It doesn't disconnect the battery. It knows what to do with it and manage it safely and allows the regen current to come into the battery. Um, so that is how we avoid that. So regen uh, was a huge discussion for us. Before we went down this path, that was one of the things we thought a lot about. How do we do this? As far as we were concerned, if we couldn't deal with regen currents, we didn't have a viable solution. It was that important to us. And we're really proud to say that we've, we've, we, we did it. We, we can handle regen currents. Um, moving on, another feature that is unique to Reliance Insight Battery is our cooling system. So we all know electronic components do not like heat. Heat damages them. And there, you saw there's a BMS in there and there's, there's a lot of components that have the ability to overheat. So not only do we oversize it, but we actually put a heat sink that is exposed to the outside of the battery. So it takes the heat from the inside and allows it to go out. Um, we, we rarely see a heat sink in the battery, but if it is, it's under the cover. So it's trapped in there. So I've never seen anything like it. And by the way, when you look at that cover where you see rely on in the middle, that's not just a, a marketing thing. That is the heat sink. Um, having that heat sink allows for uh, longer operation under high power conditions without overheating. It prolongs the life of the internal components. It provides greater stability, mechanical stability, and it also allows for better cell balancing. And um, you might wonder about having a metallic surface on the top of the battery so close to the terminals. Well, we've put a polymer coating on the surface. So if you touch it and you touch the terminals, you won't get a short. So we've protected from that. So moving on, I do want, even though this um, webinar is about insight, I realize we have people on the call, some people who have looked at lithium before, and we may have people that have never even looked at lithium. So I wanted to make sure I touch on the other advantages of lithium over lead acid. Um, one of them, no maintenance. Um, obviously, no water has to be added. There's no acid residue to clean or, or, or floors to clean because of mess from acid. Um, I'm going to skip the second one and come back to it later. Uh, lighter weight. So I know sometimes for golf cars, that's, that's a, an advantage. It doesn't damage the fairways, but there's also less um, load to carry. So that's why you get that, that um, zippier feel uh, when you're driving the car. Faster recharge. With Insight, you can charge at a rate of 60 amps per battery. So if you have two in parallel, that's 120 amps. Now, most people don't have a charger that has that high of a current, but it is available. And there are some applications where people do some fast charging. So going back to PSOC tolerance. So PSOC is partial state of charge tolerant. And this is, a real, this is another one of those ones you don't see, but it's a huge benefit. Um, as I said, I have a, many years of experience in the lead acid biz, uh, industry. I um, worked in engineering. We cut open a lot of failed batteries. And the leading cause by far of early failure of lead acid batteries is undercharging or having them sit at partial states of charge. Every time you do that, there's damage that gets done to a lead acid battery. And the more you do it, the harder it is to reverse that damage. Um, with lithium batteries, 
you will not damage from undercharging or having them sit. They can sit at 50% state of charge for days. You're not gonna damage the product. Obviously, if you don't fully charge it, you're gonna get less capacity the next cycle. But the point is, is you won't damage it. Every, even people with the best intentions leave their lead acid battery sometimes without putting on, them on charge right away and damage occurs. So that's a huge advantage of lithium. Um, we do, even though it doesn't damage it, we still do recommend at least every few days that you do um, fully charge the batteries. Um, that, you, that you fully charge the batteries just to get the full balancing um, effect. And then something that isn't on here that I wanna mention is uh, safety. Again, for people that are new to lithium, you may hear about lithium and um, issues that have happened around safety, particularly in consumer goods like cell phones or laptops. We use lithium iron phosphate as our chemistry and it is the safest lithium chemistry by far. It generates significantly less heat than other lithium chemistries. And we have the BMS to protect the product as well. So safety is a big issue or a big um, concern that we make sure that we're, we're always dealing with. So going back to Insight, let's talk about the inside of the battery. This quality really is from the inside out. So um, there are several things we've done in the construction of our battery. This is a 3D model, but this is how it looks inside. Um, and I'm gonna go over some of the things we've done to make it a quality product. So the cells, we have prismatic cells. It, it's hard to see everything in this because there's so many layers, but there's prismatic cells in there. And each cell is in an aluminum enclosure. So it's lightweight and rigid, and it provides dimensional stability of the cell, and it contributes to heat dissipation. And then each cell is in a cell holder, which fixes the cells in place, but also separates them from each other. And then there's a stainless steel bracket, which you can see that holds all the cells together. So there's several layers of, of keeping these products very stable and, um, and in place. And um, you can see there, there's a plate on the top, an, uh, an, a metal plate on the top. And what you can't see is there's a metal plate on the bottom. And those vertical bars that are black in this drawing, those hold the battery in place as a single solid unit. And what this does is it makes it vibration resistant. Sorry, I accidentally pressed the mute button there. So yeah, it's, um, it's vibration resistant by nature of that, that bracket. And that's a stainless steel metal bracket, which again helps with heat dissipation. Another thing you can't see on here is there's positive and negative bus bars, which are a good current collector instead of using thick cables. And you can see the heat sink on the top of this battery. Um, so that's another uh, feature we mentioned before to help dissipate heat. And then something I mentioned before, I said the BMS is not only designed robustly, but how it is put in the battery makes a difference. So that green flat plate under the heat sink represents the BMS. And you can see it's elevated. There's some, there's some um, metal pieces that have it not sitting on the cells. Now, any other lithium battery we've cut open, the BMS is literally floating, like it's not, it's not um, attached to, it's just floating on top of the cells. Sometimes there's some tape, electrical tape holding it in place so it can move around and you know if it gets jostled around who knows what damage can be done so our product is really solid inside and we also the container uh the the abs container is um ip67 rated so it's not waterproof but it's quite resistant to water um again that's a very high value compared to anything else out there so that speaks to the construction. 
So we've talked about everything on here, I think, but I just wanted to show a cover design um, because if you look at the cover, you might be like, what are all these buttons? So I just wanted to go through it once more. And um, some of them are obvious that the terminals, we have dual terminals and insert and a, a stud terminal. So you have options there. Um, number two is the CAN bus input and output. Number three is the output. Number four is the, the wake up button. And then five is the state of charge and status LEDs. So it tells you if it's awake or powered off or what the, what the state of charge is. The heat sink, which we went over a couple times. Number seven is something we didn't talk about. There's, there isn't much to say except that it's a vent. Um, the, the, every battery needs to have a vent just in case if things did um, overpressure. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I've heard of any of our vents actually opening on our product, but it is there as a safety feature. And then the lifting brackets, which are the same as what you'd see in a typical golf battery. So those are the features on the cover. Um, certifications. So in the lithium industry, it is uh, essential to have UN 38.3. You have to have that certification to ship them uh, legally and properly. Um, and you have to have it for each battery. You can't just say, I have UN 38.3 for all our product. Each single battery has its own certificate. It takes something to get that. And we've got that on this product. Um, CE, we have CE on this product. We have IEC 62133, which is a European requirement. And then the, the backwards RU logo, that's for UL uh, recognized component. So we have two um, UL certifications. One is for the cells. We have UL 2580 for the cells. And then we have UL 2271 for the battery pack. And the battery pack one is worth mentioning because there, it, UL for a battery pack requires redundancy in the BMS protection. So they intentionally will have one level of protection fail to make sure there's a backup. Um, we have yet to see that in any other BMS we've looked at out there. So it, it, it really takes something to pass the, the pack level uh, UL certification. So those are our certifications. And we stand behind our product. Um, it's a seven year full replacement warranty. Um, nothing else to say about that except it's full replacement and seven years. <laughs> um, so I wanna review um, you know, some of the key takeaways here and kind of bring it all back to uh, the clean sheet inputs. So um, you know, we, we talked about the power being one of the inputs. So I'm gonna reiterate, we did substantial testing so we knew exactly what the vehicles needed. And then we designed a BMS that had the intelligence to handle those. It's not a simple, here's one peak current, if you hit that, disconnect. This is much more complicated with several different peaks for different time periods. We wanted to address capacity so that we had various capacities available for various customer bases. And we did that with our parallel system. It's scalable, you can use two batteries, you can use four, five, six batteries. So you have options there. We wanted to re address regen current acceptance. Again, with application knowledge, with testing the product, understanding what those regen currents were, and not only having a BMS that physically with the hardware, with the switches and the, and the two path system could handle it, but also software that had the intelligence to take those high currents at any state of charge and be able to manage them so that the battery could accept them. We wanted to address ease of use and we did that with a drop-in size battery, with easy installation, with LEDs that let you know the state of charge, and with a lightweight design, it's 48 volts, but they're because it's GC2 size batteries, they're lightweight and easy to install. 
And then we wanted to address reliability. We did that with the construction. Um, if you compare it to any other battery, it's really built solidly. We did reliability with the parallel system. There's redundancy. If one battery has an issue, you're not out of luck. And we did that with the BMS design. Um, as I said, you need that redundancy just to pass the UL at the pack level and with the software intelligence. So those are all the things that were in the clean sheet and how we address them. So what's next? Um, I know there may be some of you on the call that are not um, uh, in the golf market or utility vehicle market. Um, we are developing products for other markets, such as floor cleaning, material handling, scissor lift, marine, RV, and other markets. We're currently in the beta testing phase of a 24 volt, 60 amp hour GC2, and it'll be very similar. You can use them in parallel. And we have more models with different voltages and even different physical sizes that are commonly used in the industry that'll be coming out in the future. They're all in the works. Um, we are gonna be at the PGA show in January, 2020. Um, you can come visit us at our booth, 3014, and we will be, um, we will be uh, displaying our Insight Series product there. And of course, if you have any more questions, we'll be there to answer them. And we're coming to the end here. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. I'm sure you have a busy schedule and you chose to be here and I hope it was worth your time. Um, I want to mention that we're always looking for distributors and dealers so you can contact us if you're interested. And if you own your own golf car and you want to get a set of batteries just for yourself, we do offer them on our website. And we are currently running an online promotion. So you get a free charger with the purchase of two or more Insight batteries. So thank you. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and happy holidays to everyone.